Good morning, and welcome to the Steve Jobs Theater. As you can tell, today's going to be a very different kind of event. We should start this thing because we got a lot to get through. So, okay, let's start. <laughs> Jeff's not impatient uh, at all. Hi, Jeff. No. <laughs> Let's go. And I'm the I'm, I'm I have an hour ahead of you. Yeah, it's dog, as if you just picked up my leash and I'm ready to go. <laughs> Good boy, Jeff. Save boy. save the humor for the show. <laughs> oh, so three. Let me try this again. Wait a second. It, two comes after three when you're counting backwards. Yeah, right? it's it's yeah, it's the other way. Yeah, there you go. It's 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 the new math. It's very confusing. It's common core. So. <laughs> Yeah. It's called descending. Three, two, one. Welcome back to yet another That Blind Tech show. And if you thought Apple broke out the star power, they ain't got nothing on us. Because joining us today in studio is Serena Gilbert. How are you doing today, Serena? I'm well, Brian. How are you? I'm great. It's great to have you back on That Blind Tech show. And of course, joining us, the newly named Allison Mervis. I was betting if I was going to get that right, <laughs> Very Allison. good. Very good. Glad to be here. And just plain old Jeff Thompson. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing good, Brian. Glad to hear you all. He's Grandpa Jeff. Don't forget that. Yeah. We obviously had a big Apple event today, although you won't be hearing this today unless Jeff uh, really pulls an all-nighter because we like to put in some post-production. I kind of thought it was funny because I noticed they were using the word best a lot. Yet when they started off and they mentioned Siri, Serena... They said the most used assistant in the world, not, not the, the best. best one. I got a good laugh out of that. <laughs> hey, they were they were speaking the truth. <laughs> they were. What are your thoughts about that, Allison? Well, I use her, but I swear at her an awful lot. She, Siri and I do not. Serena and I get along way better than Siri and I do. Because, <laughs> yeah, Siri, oh, you know, she eventually gets it done. But, oh, we, we have some struggles daily. I think it'd be awesome, Jeff, if Apple takes uh, AT and T. I think it was old line. Can you hear me now for Siri? <laughs> but uh, that was Verizon. What about you, Jeff? <laughs> I, I, hey, we know I get something wrong on every podcast. I have to get it out of the way wow, in the first three minutes. Pause though. for the wow. fact check. <laughs> yes. I said I thought it was AT and T. Jeff, can you hear me now? Yes, Brian. Loud and squeaky. <laughs> so, Jeff, I was a little snarky on Twitter today about some of the stuff. Just a little. A l little, <laughs> yeah. Just a little. Hey, Marlon, what's up? What can hey. I do for you? Hey, Jeff. How, how, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Marlon. Oh, yes. That, that's good. That's good. Um, I was wondering if uh, maybe Brian, um, Brian was pissed off at anything. No, I just read the outline. There's no what's pissing off Brian section. Nothing. Oh, I, I see. Well, you know, I've been passing around for a while and I'm, I haven't had any work. So, you know, is, are you sure he's not pissed off at anything? Anything at all? The airport, Bluetooth speakers, anything? Uh, he's a little snarky this morning, but he's changed. He's Brian's not pissed off at anything anymore. Nothing. When he's pissed off, we'll call you. We'll call you. Come on, we'll Jeff. I, I gotta get something. Come on. We'll don't don't close the door. Come on, Jeff. Jeff. Do you think we, we will ever have an Apple event where all those great videos will ever have descriptions to them? Yo, Brian, I always thought that would be really cool to have the Apple events audio described live and we could just have that option turned on. I don't think the general public would really appreciate audio description because if you've ever searched Google for voiceover or audio description, the biggest thing is nine out of 10 of the complaints are, how do you turn this dang thing off? Just keeps talking to me. The TV control room. Stand by three. A montage of scenes from TV shows. By one, make your move. A woman steps out onto a television production set. Ready? Six. Yeah, I'm ready. Five, a man with a large curved cleaver stands four, in front of a group armed with three, spears. A news broadcast two, goes live. One. Titles. Introducing a new home for the world's most creative storytellers. A campfire burns at the center of a small hillside village. Titles. Deer. A dancer on a stage raises her arms above her head. Titles for all mankind. The Morning Show. C. Home Before Dark. Coming this fall. Subscription required. A girl removes her bike helmet, police lights flashing behind her. In a bar, a man watches a cosmonaut pose with a Soviet flag on the moon. Titles, Dickinson. A woman in a red gown looks back over her shoulder as she runs toward a carriage. Titles, truth be told. 
Servant. A man slams his hand down on a dinner table. Next to him, a woman blinks back tears. Military personnel salute a man as he walks toward a plane. Now he flies through the night sky. Titles. Amazing stories. A girl in headphones and a headscarf rides a skateboard. Titles. Hala. A girl in glasses in front of a TV. Titles. Mythic Quest. A woman in 19th century costume dances, clutching her skirts in one hand. A man and a woman hug in a darkened room. This is where we build our new home. A tribe of people dressed in thick furs stand in a sunlit meadow. An Apple TV Plus logo. A woman blows out a candle. Actually, I watched described video on Blue Bloods on CBS, and like two or three times during the show, Allison, they'll say, this audio description is intended for blind viewing audiences. If you've accidentally turned it oh on, I'm gosh. thinking, <laughs> shut up and tell me what's going on on the show. <laughs> so what about descriptions during Apple events? I mean, on the Apple TV, you have that described video turned on, Allison. Well, yeah, you have the same setting on the iPhone and, and the Mac and all your Apple devices. Technologically, though, I'm not sure during a live stream if there is a way to differentiate um, what's going? What can be played if, if it can split it into into two channels like that? But I mean, it does it for television shows. So why wouldn't it be able to do it somehow for the for the Apple Live events? I think it would be a good a good thing to have. Yeah, Serena, I thought that'd be really cool if you had that turned on and the descriptions just started speaking to you. Yeah, I think they'd have to have two separate links with the live stream because it's almost going to have to be live audio described, especially when those That's celebrities true. came out and were Ugh, yeah. doing who knows what. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they'd have to have a separate channel. What are you guys, a bunch of engineers? It's just, it's Apple. It, it would just work. <laughs> oh, sure. Just like when the Chinese subtitles came through the one time. Remember that? It just yeah. worked then too. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fun. I remember that. I thought it was funny. The only celebrity that on the broadcast that had description who they said who it was, was Big Bird. <laughs> I got all excited <laughs> about that. And now Big Bird. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. At least I know who one of the yeah. celebrities is. Last week, we weren't podcasting because a lot of us had things going on. And we figured we brought out all the stars here at That Blind Tech Show. So we might as well cover the new Apple hardware. Allison, you already mentioned you've ordered the new AirPods. Did you have the old AirPods? I did not. And I was waiting because I knew that eventually I had heard the audio quality of the old AirPods in terms of the microphone. And I was not really impressed. I thought it sounded a little muddy and like people people were underwater and I'm like, I'm going to sit these out because I have a lot of other Bluetooth solutions that have a much better microphone and my Aftershocks, which have a terrible microphone. They were a better solution for me at the time in terms of keeping, keeping my ears open. But I'm told that with the AirPods, you can travel and navigate with them very easily. And so when the 2.0 came out and it talked specifically about better microphones, I hit that buy button real quick. And of course, I got the wireless charging case to go with it, even though right now I don't have a wireless charger, but I'm going to get one, I think. So <laughs> don't go cheap on the wireless no, charger. I got one, one for 1499 yeah. and it Oh dear. <laughs> I'm I well yeah. And the air power pad is coming. It is. I'm not going to hold my breath cuz I would have died a long time ago waiting for that one. <laughs> Serena, are you currently an AirPod user? Yeah, and I'm one that was not patient. So I just bought mine in like January. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. You know what? The only improvements is the Hey Siri and the microphone and stuff. I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm totally okay with it. <laughs> so I see your point, Serena. I have the AirPods. I love them. And I see that the new features are going to enhance them a bit, but they didn't really come up with all the expected enhancements that I thought they were going to be coming out with. Missing is the waterproof case and missing is the ability to have some biometrics for the health kit. You know, there was a lot of expectations. What they did come out with is really good. So if you're interested in them, click on that button like Allison did. Did. Go get them. It's, it sounds like a good product. I, myself, I really am interested in the air power coming out because with the feature or capabilities being there for air power, same with my watch, same with my phone. There's no air power pad. And Brian, you bought the cheap one. Sorry about that, but I'm still waiting. Yeah, well, the only thing that piqued my interest was the faster connectivity because mine seemed to connect at 28.8 baud speed <laughs> to my iPhone for some reason. So <laughs> that's the only thing that kind of did pique my interest. And I know I've talked that I was going to be getting the new iPad Mini 5, but after I started hearing the specs leak, I decided right before CSUN to go out and buy a 2017 iPad Pro. So honestly, I don't think that I'm going to get the iPad Mini. I don't really need it. You know, the faster chip seems nicer, but, uh, you know, 
two speaker system compared to the four speaker system on the iPad Pro is what drove me to the iPad Pro. What about you, Serena? Do you see a tiny little iPad mini in your future? I don't think so. I do almost everything on my iPhone. I can't think of things that would be more efficient on an iPad. It's just too much screen real estate for me to navigate around with voiceover. I haven't used an iPad in years. The ones that I had, I gave to my son. He just watches TV on them. Allison, iPad mini in your future or the new 10.5 iPad, either of them? No, every time I've gotten an iPad, I've ended up selling it because I thought, oh, great, I'm going to have a device with really great battery for entertainment purposes. And then I realized I got to carry the darn thing around. And it's not as convenient as just pulling my phone out of my pocket and watching or listening to whatever I want to watch or listen to. And so, no, no, there will, there will, there may never be another iPad in my future. And Jeff, I'm assuming you're not getting one because I believe you got an education iPad had about a year ago, correct? Oh, Brian, you do listen. You do listen. Yeah, I have the one that came out when they held the Apple event in Chicago. I call it the educational iPad for three twenty nine. dollars Then you beef up the storage. And I got the folio case, and I really like that. I use it for meetings and on airplanes. With that said, I am impressed with the size of the Mini. That was my favorite iPad of all. It is nice. Like, if you're watching TV, you can have it in one hand, that type of deal. It works out good for that. So at three ninety nine, dollars I don't know. I'll wait and see. We'll see what happens. Three ninety nine starting point, and that's in the U.S., of course. But uh, see, I do pay attention to you guys sometimes. I knew some of the products you had and everything. They also announced two new iMacs. Hello? Hello? Is there a delay? Hello? We're here. No one likes you. <laughs> We're all <Yes>. muted. <laughs> Three... To Jeff, you want to? You did you want to say something? Sorry. No, I was ready to jump the hurdle, and you stopped me midstream, and I caught it in my crotch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Jeff's sorry. exhausted. I, I did you see what delay. his? <laughs> did you see what his grandson did to him? He's exhausted. He's still, still recovering. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you got that correct. I called it his well, granddaughter. <laughs> I mean, we're all sitting in the United States, and you said, but that's U.S. dollars. Like we all cross over to Canada <laughs> to buy our goods. You know, Canada. Eh? Yeah. People have commented, you know, about that, so that's why I put U.S. dollars all the time. Okay. You can't make everyone happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We've learned that. But we can make each other happy. Aww. Okay. So I'm only going to go to two of you on the next one. Who wants to talk about the uh, new IMAX? Not, Not it. it. <laughs> I do. Okay, just Jeff. Jeff, because you guys don't use them. Gotcha. Just Jeff. Hey, I should start my own show. Just Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Known as Jeff. There we go. I believe the only full-time Mac users on this show, iMac users, are Jeff and myself. And mine's from 2016 and still running fantastically well. Jeff, U.S. dollars starting at $12.99 and $14.99. Is there a new iMac coming in your future with these new chips? You know, Brian, I was curious. So I opened up my Apple Store app on my phone and I went in and looked at the IMAX. And, you know, they got the 21 and the 27 inch variety. And I noticed the highest priced one, you know, with the 8 gigs of RAM standard when you're looking at them in the store, unless you start beefing that up, was fourteen ninety nine. And that came with i5 eighth generation. But when you looked at the most expensive 27 inch, it came with the i5 nine generation. They're all starting out with the Fusion drive, which is a combination of what we know as a spinning drive combined with a SSD. I would opt for an SSD, so the prices would go up. It's nice that they are updating these quietly, but for right now, Mine's running good. It's an Apple. It just works. Yeah, it was very quietly. Uh, no big event. Uh, yeah, they just kind of said they're coming, and now you can pre-order them. By the time this show's out, I'm sure they'll be out. But when you started saying newer, strong, I thought you were going to do like an ad for a new $6 million <laughs> man movie, by the way. so But Apple gets something, like any company, Apple gets some things right and some things wrong, at least in this guy's opinion. One thing I think they hit out of the ballpark is iCloud uh, for the most part. I am using two terabytes of storage. I paid the $9.99 a month for that storage. How about you, Serena? Are you using any expanded iCloud coverage to sync all of your information? No, I am so cheap. <laughs> when I when it's like, oh, you're close to your five gigs and I start deleting things. Um, <laughs> I honestly use OneDrive from Microsoft because I already pay for the Office 365 subscription. So any like data or photos that I want to access anywhere, I just throw them in there because you get two terabytes for free with that. Oh, that's Hey, Brian, yeah. she's so cheap. She hardly pays attention. No. Nope. <laughs> <Ba-bum, bum. laughs> Hashtag fail. <laughs> Hashtag, that was like one of my bad ones. <laughs> that was Brian bad. <laughs> so, uh, Jeff, 
you're there on the iMac and iPhone and iPad. Are you paying for extended storage? And if you do, do you find it useful? Yes, I subscribe to iCloud Drive at the $2.99 per month subscription level. That gives me 200 gigabytes of storage. And it really paid off for me. When I was down in Iowa, I needed some files that were on my computer. So my son actually opened up my computer and slid them over to the iCloud Drive folder. And I could open up my iCloud Drive in settings on my iPhone where I managed Manage the storage and I went into iCloud Drive and opened it up and slowly they started populating right in there. So it was really great. So then I just opened up my MacBook Pro, went to my iCloud Drive and boom, there they were. Well worth it. And And being that I'm at like 165 of my 200 gigabytes being used, I believe I will have to upgrade to the next one, which I believe, Brian, is the 999 for Two terabytes. It is. That's correct. It's great, you know, especially if you're traveling, if you go with a laptop or an iPad, just to have all your content as we did a demo not too long ago about the the syncing desktops and documents folder. So you just know you have everything with you. Now, the only complaint I have about iCloud, and we're not going to go on a tangent here, is iCloud.com because I think it's hilarious that Apple still can't get their own voiceover to work (laughs) with iCloud.com, which you do have to go into to set uh, mail rules and everything if you're like me and use them and everything. Allison, I know you were thrilled to death about Apple News Plus, and that name just made me go, really? (laughs) Tim Cook was really on today with his delivery. He was. And the way he prepared to deliver that, I was expecting like something bigger than Apple News Plus. So let's get started with Apple News. Well, today we're bringing magazines to Apple News. All of these magazines come to life in an all new service that we call Apple News Plus. Apple News Plus will bring you over 300 magazines across all sorts of topics. And Apple News Plus is the only place where you will find all these magazines in a single package. But Apple News Plus is about more than magazines. Apple News Plus also includes some of the most popular premium digital subscriptions like the Skim. We download groups of articles from our servers, and then we use on-device intelligence to make recommendations. And that means we don't know what you read, and in addition to that, we don't allow advertisers to track you. We decided to make this available to your entire family with family sharing at no extra charge. You pay $9.99 per month. Apple News Plus is available today. Just download today's updates of iOS and Mac OS and launch Apple News. And the first month is free. I love, you know, I've played with it for about three minutes and 28 seconds and I love Apple News Plus. I've got the trial. I was flipping through articles in People Magazine. I was really, really happy with it and it's accessible so far. I'm right with you, Allison. I don't know when the last time I had three minutes and 28 seconds of sheer joy (laughs) and I did subscribe. I'm happy to subscribe and I'll see how it goes. The only thing is I could not figure out how to turn on family sharing with Apple News Plus. You have to have a family for that to work, Jeff. (laughs) I think that happens automatically, I think, Jeff. If you go into your family settings, you can verify, but I think that that automatically gets shared. And what I can't figure out is how to favorite a magazine. Like, I want to favorite, I want to tell it, People Magazine is one of my favorite magazines and I'm almost ashamed to admit it, but not really. Um, But (laughs) It does download it, it, though. It downloads it. I want to have that in my little favorites. He said there was a favorites publication list. No. Well, we must explore. So, Allison and Jeff, since you've used it already, one of my complaints about Apple News was you'd be flicking through an article, say, People Magazine, and you'd be reading today, 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 35 days ago. There'd be, like, nothing in the Apple News before the plus from day one to day 35. Have you noticed if you keep flicking, do you get two days old? Well, no, this is this is actual issues. Like, for example, I was looking at the April 1st okay. issue of People Magazine, mm-hmm. and I was flicking through all the sections and all the different articles within those sections. And it was nice because I could just go through, read what I want, not read what I didn't want, and yep. it was awesome. When I was in Apple News Plus, I opened up National Geographic because it was a magazine that I had looked at as a kid. Do you go there, Jeff, to see the photos or read the articles? Uh, maybe. (laughs) The thing that attracts me to the magazine format is you're not going to read partway in and then have to go outside the news app to a website to finish or get the full article. You are getting a full story. 
and a story that you choose within the magazine. And I really like that. Serena, for the blindness community here in the United States, as it was pointed out to me on Twitter today, we have NFB Newsline. Will you pay for Apple News Plus, or do you think NFB Newsline, which also has magazine subscriptions, is good enough for you? No, I... You're outnumbered here, Brian. So (laughs) I actually played around with the Apple News Plus as well. I didn't hit subscribe yet, but it was letting me read articles, so I don't know if that's a bug or (laughs) if I just magically figured out something by accident. The NFB Newsline, it's okay, but it doesn't have a lot of the magazines that are mainstream that I want to be able to read. And I really like that it's just built right in. You can navigate by heading, you could flip through. Like it was surprisingly accessible. And I've wanted a magazine subscription service that's accessible for probably seven or eight years now. Because there used to be one, I think it was called like Zine or something. And then someone else bought them out. I remember Zine. And it was like barely accessible. You had to like, it was like an act of Congress to get it into the text Uh view. And it had magazines that I liked reading. And now that we have this, that's naturally accessible. I'm really excited, honestly. Allison, do you recall what the monthly cost was for the magazine subscription? For the Apple News Plus, it's only $9.99 a month. And when you think about, for example, if you were doing an individual subscription to the Wall Street Journal, which their app was not that accessible, it's like $32.95 a month. Mm -hmm. So if you read the Wall Street Journal, it's worth getting this subscription because you get like 200 other magazines (laughs) that you can look at as you want. And as Tim Apple... Oops, Tim Cook said it would cost you $8,000 to get these magazine subscriptions. A year. Yeah, that's yeah, U.S. dollars, Brian. <laughs> U.S. dollars. So for $120 a year, you're getting $8,000 worth of magazines, whether you read them or not. Wow. And I think it's pretty comparable to what that service was way back in the day. I That one was either $10 or $15 a month. I can't remember, but it's it was pretty comparable. Yeah, something like that. Well, the next section they moved on to now, and a lot of these services, uh, besides Apple News, which launched today, won't be launching to the fall. Some exciting stuff here. We're going to start off with Apple Pay. Now let's talk about Apple Pay. We're bringing Apple Pay to transit in major cities in the U.S., starting right here on the West Coast with Portland and rolling out in Chicago and New York City later this year. And just real quick, Jeff, have you ever used Apple Pay before? A lot, yeah. Allison? Yep, lots. And Serena? I use it a lot when I'm buying stuff on my phone, but I forget to use it when I'm at stores. I just don't think about it. Yeah. (laughs) I use it like Serena a lot on my phone. Uh, It's great, you know, quickly pay with Apple Pay, especially with DoorDash, which I believe Allison turned me on to initially. I do love DoorDash. Oh, DoorDash. The thing that happened to me, I was flying on JetBlue back from Los Angeles, and they said, oh, we you know, pay with credit or Apple Pay. I said, oh, let me pay with Apple Pay. And it took us about about 15 minutes to figure out how to work Apple Pay on the phone. And finally, I just can I just give you my debit card? So I guess I got to spend a little time because I do hear it is fully accessible and works great. But Jeff, have you had any snafus? You said you use it a lot. Oh, no. It just loves taking my money. It's just boom, gone. <laughs> Jeff, I was expecting you to say, no, it just works. It's Apple. You know, you're disappointing me there. Oh, no. I wanted you to say it. This is being recorded. Now I got proof. Oh, oh, that's great. <laughs> Blackmail info. I would never do that. No, it just works. No, it it's just Apple. works. It's Apple. No, it just works. It's Apple. Oh, maybe. I amazingly thought the most exciting part of the show was this whole Apple Card service. Today, we're introducing a brand new service, and we call it Apple Card. You don't have to wait days to get your card. Just sign up on your iPhone, and in just minutes, you get your Apple Card, and you can start using it right away. You can use it worldwide anywhere with Apple Pay, in apps, in stores, on the web, and your Apple Card will be available across all of your Apple devices. Apple Card is also always with you because it's in your iPhone, in the Wallet app. And the Wallet app has completely new capabilities. So you can see everything you need to know about your Apple Card. With Apple Card, if you have a question, just text us right from messages. Everything from getting details on a transaction to letting us know your new address. With Apple Card, we use machine learning and Apple Maps to transform this mess into names and locations that you'll recognize. Apple Card also automatically organizes and totals your purchases. And you can keep track of your spending by categories, like food and drink, shopping, entertainment, and more. And Apple Card also shows you how your spending is trending week over week or month over month. So every time you spend with Apple Card, you get cash back and you get it every day. In fact, every time you pay with your iPhone or Apple Watch, you'll get 2% of the purchase amount in daily cash. And for purchases made directly from Apple, you get 3% daily cash. 
I work obviously with a lot of blind people and I have a pretty amazing memory with numbers so I know all my credit and debit cards I even know my bank routing number can you give us a test there uh, Brian yeah yeah tell us I can t- yeah yes. yeah the routing number zero two one zero 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 eight nine. no no all the other I'm ones give you a t- <laughs> and your check count number two your, eight six your seven five three oh nine I got it I got it <laughs> that's my checking account number do you need me to read it slower to you <laughs> can you sing it <laughs> no I've been asked not to <laughs> <laughs> and if you get that magic pencil thing for your iPad, could you trace your house key for yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Would you guys like my mother's maiden name and social, se- my social sure. security number while I'm at sure, it? Sure, why not? Only if it's relevant. Yeah. Well, I, I think this is awesome, you know, for people that uh, the fact that they don't have to look at a card and the number, you know, the card's going to be coming out later. Uh, Serena, what were your thoughts about the Apple card and do you plan to get it? You know, I might actually be getting one, and I know this sounds really silly, but it'd be kind of cool to have a titanium card in my wallet. (laughs) Is titanium bulletproof? I don't know. (laughs) But it is intriguing. Like, I think it's going to be super secure because it it is. I I don't know how no other credit card company has thought of why do we need to put the numbers on the card? Why don't we just put them in an app that's more secure? How is that like the first company that's thought of that? Yeah, that's true. Well, they're not a bank. It's Apple. <laughs> they are partnering with Goldman Sachs, but they're an investment house, not a bank. And MasterCard, what's in your app? And MasterCard, yeah, very true. That's true. So anywhere MasterCard is taken. You think Visa's heard this announcement today and went, oh, snap. <laughs> and MasterCard's going to be really upset when Apple becomes a bank. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Allison, do you plan to apply for the Apple card? Oh, yeah. Because of the rewards, because of the easy ways that it shows you the different spending patterns, because of the ways that it can break down um, how quickly you need to pay things off to not incur a bunch of interest. And yeah, I definitely want the titanium card, not going to lie. Yeah. And Jeff, I thought the coolest thing was you could just simply apply for this card on any of your devices. And nice, simple, easy. So do you plan to get the Apple card? I think I will. And there's many reasons. But one thing that stood out to me was, and it was very interesting because most banks just pounce on this, is no late fees. How does that work? Somebody's got to explain to me. How in the world can they offer no late fees? I'm just never going to (laughs) pay. I'm sure there's a time limit to it. And they're probably making most of their money on the interest, honestly. Because think about how many people are going to put their MacBooks on there now. Because previously, and actually, if you really think about it, I bet that when the new iPhone upgrade season comes around, you're going to get like 5% back if you if you put your mm-hmm. new iPhone, the recurring payments on the Apple card. So that's all coming oh, right totally back to good. them instead of them yeah. farming it out to a third party company where they're not making any of those yeah. financial and dollars. And Brian, if it. you don't pay, you're just going to get a notice. Yeah. If you want voiceover to come back on. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to take away your home button if you don't pay. <laughs> Gone. So Apple, yeah, yeah, they, they come to your house and repo all your Apple devices. <laughs> That'd be worse than not paying for me. There were lots of things about this that really caught my attention. Smart recognition of purchases. Now, I think everybody in the world is going to love this, except married men that like to hit adult places, Jeff. Um... What are you trying to imply over there, Brian? I love how you, I love how you said that to Jeff specifically. <laughs> I, I, I'm not implying. <laughs> I, I'm looking over my shoulder. Jeff pauses and looks over his shoulder and then looks down and then. <laughs> 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 hey, describe video. Yeah. <laughs> so, Allison, how many times have you looked at one of your credit statements and said, wow, it's so cryptic? Yeah, I'm like, did it get hacked or did I shop at this like a 126HV thing? Like, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to those location. And then you feel stupid purchases. when you call the company and they're like, oh, it was 7 Eleven. You bought a donut and you're like, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I did. That's right. <laughs> Maybe if you didn't charge me as 11 7, I'd know. Right. <laughs> Serena, one of the other things about this, like I said, there was just things that they just kept getting better and better to me, was to help you organize your budget, tell you if you take this long to pay it off, it's going to cost you this much in the long run. I think that's going to be extremely helpful to a lot of people that maybe don't manage their finances so well. Sometimes I just don't want to know. <laughs> and that's why I started with you. <laughs> Has Jeff told you about my shopping habit? No. <laughs>
I follow you mm. on Twitter. I haven't been on Twitter in months until the last three days. <laughs> so. I thought you just hadn't been shopping a lot lately. But <laughs> Allison, what were your thoughts about this kind of organization and just everything? Everything just seems straightforward until maybe it's not and we actually see how it yeah, works. Yeah, I, I like the idea of the organization because I know I, I'm not great with money. Um, so I, I need a little help. <laughs> so... <laughs> With my with my financial organization figuring out where I can cut back and things. So yeah, I um I, I like this idea a lot. I really like the idea that they have a special chip in there for the privacy and stuff and that all the information is stored in your app or on the device. On the device. Yeah. On the secure enclave. Yeah. 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 I'm now gonna have to take the uh Apple wallet out of page eight in a folder because something tells me I'm going to be using it much more. And uh, Jeff, uh, were you excited at all about rewards and cash back every day? Because I kind of like it at the end of the month and I'm like, ooh, yeah, like with my Amazon card. No, I'm really looking forward to the daily rewards, the daily cash. I hate waiting the entire billing cycle like Amazon does. Yeah, it's annoying. I like this. So you're saying you want it every day. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll probably get a charge out of it too. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you boys. That is totally going to get edited out. <laughs> you can't take the 12-year-olds out of them. <laughs> you know, we had a perfectly delivered bit there, and you guys mucked it up. But... We were going fine. <laughs> okay, yeah, Serena, you got my word. I'll take that one out of there. All right, go ahead, Brian. The App Store. And I think Apple could actually do something revolutionary here, Serena, if they would put an accessibility rating on how accessible or what it works with. I think it would make a lot of developers more aware of accessibility. What are your thoughts about that? That would definitely be nice because I've seen some apps that I'm like, oh, that would be really cool, but I'm not paying $5 to see if it works, you know? (laughs) But you know what? iOS 13 hasn't been announced, so maybe in June, maybe you'll hear something like that. That's true. Am I dreaming here, Allison? I just foresee some problems with it because that's going to require... I I don't know if that kind of testing to give an accurate rating can be automated. It's going to cause them to have to hire a lot of folks, and maybe this would be a good job for uh, very technical blind people who can accurately perform these types of ratings working for Apple. There you go. Just testing each app that comes through the store. I don't know how economically feasible that is. I would like to see something like that, yes, because I would like to know before I buy a game or subscribe to this game service that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Look at the new Allison Mervis creating job industry for the blind. Uh, Fantastic. Well, I am a rehab counselor. Entrepreneurship. (laughs) Wow. We yeah. should get her on Job Insights. <laughs> Is that a podcast? I'm just kidding. I was about to attack you so bad. <laughs> I knew you would. I, I, luckily, I'm what? At least seven, eight states away. So I'm feeling pretty secure. <laughs> You're talking physical geographical states, right? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay. What is with your jokes today, Jeff? They were on Twitter. <laughs> well, you know, I'm here all episode. <laughs> So here's where I started to get extremely snarky during the Apple broadcast. The Apple... Oh, wait, wait. That started this morning, didn't it? Where you started to get extremely snarky. You were extremely snarky before the Apple event. I know. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. What can I say? It's been a very busy day. But <laughs> The orchard. <laughs> wrong side of the orchard. <laughs> Every time I've wanted to download a game that sounds exciting to me, the worst phrase I could ever hear as soon as I open the app is... Landscape mode, because 99.9% of the time, it's not going to work with voice, or I don't know why it is. And a lot of the games that I like to play are more sim-based type stuff, like baseball and football, which are really just text-based games. So I have no clue why they're not accessible. Apple Arcade is the world's first game subscription service for mobile, desktop, and living room. With a single subscription, you'll get access to over 100 new and exclusive games. You'll be able to play Apple Arcade games across iPhone, iPad, Mac, and Apple TV, and pick up where you left off in a game, even if you switch devices. And unlike streaming services, every game will be playable offline. There will be no ads and no additional purchases needed. And parents can manage their kids' access with our screen time features. Apple Arcade games cannot collect any data about you, nor track any information about how you play their games without your consent. Allison, I know you're a big gamer. What are your thoughts and hopes for the Apple Arcade and accessibility? So I hope for the Apple Arcade, if there's even a few games that are accessible that aren't flipping card games, even though I like my card games, if there are some good fantasy-based games that are accessible, that have immersive 
play and then allow me to be in the world for a long time, then I will totally spring for whatever the subscription fee is. I need them to show me first that there are going to be some accessible titles. This is not, I am not going to be an early adopter on this one. Well, maybe if the games have an accessibility review, then we'll know. You know, that would be great. I don't think they will be able to get their stuff together that quickly. That would be cool. Allison, it's Apple. It just works. It ju- That's right. That's right. <laughs> Serena, are you a gamer and are you excited about the Apple Arcade? I would just be happy if I could play Monopoly against people who aren't blind. Not that I have anything wrong with that, but... I'm with you there. Yeah. It would be really nice to be able to connect with even some friends in real life. And because I, I love RS games, like I, I really do. But I want to be able to play some of those mainstream games against real people like Spades or Hearts. Like, I, that's all I want. I don't need anything immersive or I'm not a big fan of the audio, like text-based games. I just want to play something simple and know that it's a real person on the other side. Yeah, to be able to play with your family and friends exactly. and stuff. Uh, words with friends. I don't know if they ever made that accessible. I gave up on it. How about yourself there, Jeff? Uh, are you uh, a gamer at all? Well, I'd like to go back to what Serena said. What do you mean real friends in real life? What? What a concept. <laughs> Serena, you're killing me. No, actually, I'm with Serena. I like Yahtzee. I like games that you play with family and stuff. And most of my family are sighted people. Most of my friends are a mixed bag of, well, sighted and blind. We'll leave it as that. You're too busy editing podcasts. <laughs> no, I like card games. I got Braille cards. I got accessible Scrabble, and I have an accessible chessboard set. So I do have access to games, and I can play with anybody that wants to play. You, you know what? I used to love to play poker, but what game is not real popular with the blindness community is strip poker. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on. What, what side of the bed did you wake up on, Brian? <laughs> The dirty hey, that side. That was a great line. That was a great line. It wasn't dirty. <laughs> yes. That's like the third th- dirty joke you've made this yes. podcast. <laughs> Poor Jeff. <laughs> it's not much work, Serena. Just chop, chop. He's gone. I do it all the time. Brian's like job security to an editor. <laughs> yep. All new Apple TV Plus. Now, when Apple came out with the TV app, that was one of the things, as most people know, I'm highly entertainment, was really looking forward to. But the problem with the Apple TV and the iPhone was they really gave control to the networks to create their apps. And it really ruined a lot of accessibility where on the Apple TV. TV2, because Apple designed everything, everything was fully accessible. So I'm a little bit excited because I did read that they're coming out with an all new app design and I'm hoping Apple designs it. What were your thoughts about TV Plus there, Jeff? I'm totally excited about it. I really love the presentation they put on and, you know, all the people that they're bringing to the show, all the options that we'll get. And who knows, my Apple Orchard will be sharing everything across all the products. So I like it. Only the channels you want on demand ad-free for the entire family, and all of it is inside the new Apple TV app. With Apple TV channels, whether you get your TV from a streaming service like Prime Video, Hulu, or ESPN+, movies from iTunes, sports, news, and network TV from cable or satellite, or shows from HBO, Showtime, and stars with the new Apple TV channels, it's all together in one place, the Apple TV app. You'll be able to get this new experience, including Apple TV channels, on all these devices through a software update this May. We're bringing the Apple TV app to the Mac. We're launching the same great experience with Samsung this spring, followed by Sony, LG, and Vizio. We're bringing the Apple TV app to smart TVs. And we're even bringing the Apple TV app to Roku and Amazon. Allison, one of the things that hit me after Tim Cook announced all the networks that were going to be included in Apple TV, it occurred to me that the complete list of networks that offer zero described video content, like HBO, Showtime, X Stars. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could always change, you know, with uh, continued advocacy. We don't know what the full. I don't. I don't have a copy of the full list. Maybe we'll have one on the show notes if it's available. But I think I want to just clarify something for the listeners. You're mentioning Apple TV Plus, which is their original content service. I think, though, what you're talking about in terms of the networks is the Apple TV channels feature that they're also rolling out. It's a little confusing because there's two Apple 
Apple TV things. There's the Apple TV channels feature where they're actually allowing you to subscribe to certain channels that you want and have either live or on-demand content from those channels, which I like because depending on what they offer, I may unsubscribe from YouTube TV because as much as I like it, I pay for a lot of channels I don't need. And if I could just get like five or six channels that I want to watch, that'd be cool. But then the Apple TV Plus is where they're rolling out all the original content that they themselves are producing through their studios. And that looks really cool. I'm really looking forward to watching all of that. But we have even more to contribute to the TV experience. Apple TV Plus. We've partnered with the most accomplished storytellers, as well as a new generation of the most exciting voices who together will define Apple TV Plus as the destination for the highest quality originals. From documentaries to dramas, from kids to comedies, the highest quality of storytelling in one single place. This is Apple TV Plus. Apple TV Plus is an ad-free subscription service. It's on demand, available online and offline. Everything's downloadable with exclusive original movies and shows with new additions every single month. And it's all starting this fall. Yeah, this part of the show made my head hurt because I wasn't sure what was Apple TV, what was Apple TV Plus. Well, you fell asleep, I remember. You got got mad. And and that's my good litmus test of whether or not an Apple event is good. If it's good, it pisses Brian off. So (laughs) Don't stop now, Allison. Keep going. (laughs) Yeah, if it's good, it pisses Brian off. And if it's bad, well, I've I've never seen a bad Apple event. I've never, I have not seen, in, in all the time I've been doing that blind tech show, I've not watched an Apple event that didn't piss Brian off in some fundamental way. So they've they've all been great. Well, you have you have I impossible have standards, standards, Mr. Fischler. Impossible. <laughs> God, I love this girl. I do, and I enjoy him and everything. Now, Serena, one thing uh, that was pointed out to me was that this Apple TV Plus, they didn't actually mention a pricing plan. So, where do you? Do you have a ballpark, or what were your thoughts about Apple TV and Apple TV Plus? Well, I'm actually really excited about the Apple TV channels feature because I'm not sure some of you guys caught, but they said that there's going to be some cable and satellite providers that'll be right in there. So they mentioned DirecTV. I don't remember. The, I only noticed DirecTV because that's who I happen to subscribe to. But one thing that they said that caught my eye is that everything will open up right in the TV app. It's not going to do what it does now where you click it and then it sends you to a possibly inaccessible right. screen to enter your password. <laughs> um, so... One thing for the listeners to remember as well is if you've been following audio description, Hulu is supposed (laughs) to provide audio description for any of their programs that, you know, already have those existing tracks. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed for any of their original content. So if you think about it, when this new TV, Apple TV channels, gosh, it's just way too many words, um, um, revised app launches and they said May... Maybe it's wishful thinking, but maybe Hulu will also launch their brand new spiffy new app around that time. And then you've got a really huge solution to the TV content piece. And that is when I would then consider completely canceling my regular like direct TV. That's all I'm waiting for is Hulu and their audio description because everything that I watch is on Hulu. And if you're like Serena and she doesn't cancel her cable, you'll be able to get all your news and sports in the new Apple TV app, which I don't think you're watching sports. I don't believe you're a big sports fan, but you probably watch the news. Mm, Local news, but I don't watch a lot of the national news. So that's kind of a big hiccup with the streaming things because if your region hasn't opted in, like your local network hasn't opted into that, then you don't get to see your local news a lot of the times unless you stream it in their app i live in new york city we'll be in there so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah you don't have you're like the first one every time yeah um, i think the apple tv plus will be around 10 to 14 dollars a month okay. somewhere in there how about you allison any idea i think netflix is what 12.99 a month so i gotta figure it they've got to stay competitive with the other services so i don't think it's going to be more than 14 or so i am curious to see what the channel is like what each channel will be because I'm paying $40 a month right now for YouTube TV. And like I said, I watch about five channels. So if I can pay $5 a channel and pay 25 instead of 40, I'm going to do it. And Jeff, uh, one thing I noticed was they mentioned the Apple TV app is going to be coming to a whole slew of TVs. And he gave a whole list, Sony. And I was starting to panic because I didn't hear Toshiba Fire. And then they said Amazon TV, which that is so mm-hmm. that that'll be pretty cool to be able to access that anywhere 
Right, Jeff? You know, it just seems like there's so many different ways of accessing different channels, different networks, just like the ecosystem of your home with Amazon devices or Google devices. Well, it just seems like this move by Apple seems to be pulling a lot of things together. They're coming together in one package. Bringing them all together. Yeah. yeah. That's what Apple does. They bring people, Apple and Oprah bring people together. Oh, yeah. Oprah. I mean, she holds up a book in her hand and it's a million seller. Yeah. I'm very excited. I adore Oprah. I've never read an Oprah recommended book, I don't believe. I don't know if you have a soul. <laughs> Well, Allison, this was the part of the show where I dozed because it was just video after video and person after person, which I had no clue who it was. But you seem to really enjoy the content, the new Apple content. So what were your thoughts about that? I did. I'm looking forward to the C show about the Mm -hmm. show about where... Uh, the whole population is blind due due to a virus and it's hundreds of years later and they've completely assimilated and adapt to everybody being blind. So that seems very cool. It seems like it's going to do a lot to, to normalize blindness. I know people are up in arms about we didn't, they didn't hire any blind actors. Well, guess what people, there aren't that many blind actors. Oh God, so, do not you know, get every, me started on that. I everybody so calm irritated down. That. Oh my goodness, Serena, you should have seen my Twitter rant. It was, I showed a little temper on, on the Twitter. But yeah, and then I want to see the drama about the morning show because it has Reese Witherspoon, Jennifer Anderson, and Steve Carell. And I think it will handle yeah. the sometimes delicate issue of male-female dynamics in a workplace in a funny way because it's Steve freaking Carell. I mean, you can't you can't go wrong. I, I think the 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 kids program looks super cute um i i basically want to see all of it i like the little america the idea of the little america program can't honestly remember what other shows they talked about but i am really oh amazing stories uh steven spielberg's going to be doing going to be doing that so i am just i'm just super super excited and serena i would be absolutely shocked in florida if this their original content comes out with described video but what were your thoughts about all the content announcements today you seem pretty excited as well i agree with allison i'm actually really looking forward to the c show gotta say that 10 times fast. And I just thinking about it, hearing Allison talk about it, how many Apple products do you think will be strategically placed in that show? <laughs> Product placement so is many. king these days, but with voiceover yes. running, yep. <laughs> yeah, when you're blind, you don't see the products, which is kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> and Jeff, you also seem to be excited about uh, some of the original content. Yeah, I'm excited for Apple TV Plus. I think they did a great presentation, having the actors come out there and really personalizing the shows and giving you a little inside scoop on them. I thought it was really good job by Apple. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, and then the show about the the the, the singer songwriter as a singer. I'm like, yay! I'm so oh, excited. Yeah. That and then she sang be- that song yeah. beautifully. Sarah Bareilles. She always sings beautifully. Yeah. I believe I read that Apple's already invested a billion dollars in original content and everything. Well, they got it. They may as well. Invest. Yeah, but yeah. do you know how much Netflix and Hulu invest in it? I mean, Not Hulu personally. is like nine billion a year or something. Nine? How much? Nine yeah. million or nine billion? <laughs> billion. Billion. Okay, so they're doing nine times as many shows. And they're not profitable still. That's what they claim, but you could do creative accounting to say you're not profitable. Does anyone else kind of wish they wouldn't have announced this stuff until the fall? Now we have to wait. And it, you know, it's not like yes. we can't find a thousand and one other things to watch until then. But still, I'm like, I want it. <laughs> well, the air power is coming out, you guys. <laughs> sure it is. Uh-huh. Sure it is. It's only yeah. been a year since they mentioned. No, a right. year and a half. Yeah, it's been a it. long time. Yeah. There is a reference to it on the AirPod package, I'm told, though. Mm-hmm. I think I have 150 titles in my Netflix queue and probably 40 in my Amazon queue. And oh of course, guys, I have at least 70% of my TiVo filled because I was out of town. <laughs> we'll be nice to you, Brian. We won't make fun of you. And one night in the hotel, I fell asleep to stuff on my TV, Aww. which was really nice on my iPad. So, Allison, how many companies do you think Apple put out of business today? <laughs> I don't think Apple actually put anybody out of business. There is enough content out there, enough different content produced by these different studios that I think there's room. There's room for, for everybody in the market right now. There's a kind of a different way to look at this because everyone's been kind of speculating what's Apple going to do. They Their income's not going to be as high because... I, people are keeping their iPhones for like four and five, six years now. If you think about everything they just rolled out, so let's see, Apple News Plus, that's $10 a month. The arcade one is probably going to be $10 a month. Channels, who knows what they're getting for that as people subscribe. And then add on the Apple TV Plus, they could be getting an extra 30 to $40 a month out of a good 40% of their <laughs> loyal fans every single month. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm sure they'll be making some kind of money out of the Apple cards. Of course, the interest right I'm there sure. alone. Yeah. So they did claim it was going to have a low interest rate, but I pay everything off every month lately. I try. <laughs> so Serena, we had a lot of announcements today, service related. Last week we had new products announced. What were your overall thoughts? Overall, I think Apple took a big step forward in padding their pockets. <laughs> but I honestly don't see anything truly like innovative that they've done. Um, they're repackaging the TV app, which is really cool, but it's nothing like, oh my gosh, the credit card's pretty cool. But again, the only cool thing is like the security features and the fact that we're going to have titanium in our wallets. Like I think that, and they know how much we're going to dork out over that. That's why they did that. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> even the Amazon card, don't you feel kind of cool flipping that out? It's just a thicker piece of plastic. It's huge. But yeah. It makes me feel like, powerful. Sweet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They know that they're good at marketing. (laughs) It's Apple. I mean, I don't know what else they can do to like really truly impress me because there's just nothing left. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what they do in September and June. Yeah. Allison, your overall thoughts of what all the services that were announced today? I want them all except the jury's out on the games thing. I want I, they got to prove to me that they're going to make it accessible first. And Jeff? I'm dusting off my Apple TV. I do watch it periodically, but this is going to bring it around just because there's so many other options right now. I'm not a huge TV watcher, but I'm excited. I'm excited about all the new products and all this stuff. I I like how they rolled it out this time. Who ever thought that they would secretly, quietly roll out four or five products the week before? That was was new. That was different. And I like that. Yeah, it was nice to be surprised for a change with the products. And I I actually said to Jeff early today, I said, oh, hold on, let me go. I have to make sure my Apple TV is still plugged in and working because I think the last time I used it was during the last Apple event and everything. But it worked great. It worked great. So, uh, well, cool. Well, anybody else have anything to add? Uh, Serena, what do you have coming up besides podcasting, Job Insights? Thank you for the plug. (laughs) Honestly, nothing. I am a boring person today. So nothing at all. Nothing going on in the springtime in Colorado. Mm, I can't think that far ahead. No. (laughs) Well, beyond the next two hours. Honestly, I can't think of anything that I have going on. We have nothing planned for like vacations or anything yet. I'm just happy that it is like getting warmer now it's gonna be 71 on wednesday i'm happy about that <laughs> and where can the listeners follow you i'm on twitter and facebook it's at blindy blog b-l-i-n-d-y-b-l-o-g oh so that's who i was talking to today you didn't know that was me <laughs> i knew that was you i'm just kidding gosh I knew it was you. I'm not that flighty. Anyway, <laughs> Allison, what do you have coming up and where can the listeners find you? Uh, nothing much. Just trying to, you know, slog through the rainy mud in Napa. It needs to stop raining here. I know it's good for the grapes, but my goodness. I can be found on Twitter, though, at Hot4Technology. That's Hot, the number four technology. If you want to find me on Facebook, I really don't post that often. So it's better to connect with me on Twitter, although I haven't been there much either. Lots going on in my life. But I am at Allison A.L. L-I-S-O-N, Mervis, M-E-R-V-I-S. Jeff Thompson, besides spending a lot of time in the editing room, what do you have going on? Well, I'm actually winding down this month and I'll be taking off to Washington, D.C. We'll be going for the National Council of State Agencies for the Blind Convention out there. That's always a good time where we meet all the executive directors of all the states. It's a good time. I like doing that. I've been out there three other times. So, Do you ever stay home, Jeff Thompson, ever? Um... Yes. For this show, I made sure I stayed. For like longer than five minutes. I said, is Allison going to be on the show? I'm staying home. Oh, that's sweet. (laughs) So, and uh, they can reach me at known as Jeff on Twitter and at Blind Abilities. Oh, so that's who I was talking to today. Gosh. You see, you're not the only one, Serena. And I've got a hectic few months coming up. Uh, Nash and I, Nash will be hitting Gotham Comedy Club stage for his last performance. Uh, We're going to be setting that up because he will be fully retiring in May. May 19th is his full retirement day where I fly him down to Florida. I've already been partnered with my next guide dog. We've met. Uh, we had a beer together and, uh, you know, he seemed like a good wingman. So, uh, he passed the test. No, we, we, we've we just met people. So I've got a lot going on, and there's going to be some changes coming up for me. So can't talk about any of them publicly right now, but uh, it's going to be an exciting time. And uh, I'll try not to be as snarky on Twitter about Apple stuff so we don't annoy people. But it was fun for today, and I guess for now, we are out. <laughs>